This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HTC Droid Incredible for Verizon. This is Verizon's latest Android Superphone and it certainly competes well with the still non-existent Nexus 1 for Verizon. It has a 1 GHz Snapdragon processor, 8 gigs of storage, and 8 megapixel camera autofocus with dual LED flash on the back, and the usual set of wireless features which include Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a GPS that works with Google Maps. There is no VZ Navigator on board. This is a 3.7 inch AMOLED, which means more saturated colors, display, multi-touch, capacitive, and it runs HTC Sense user interface and software on top of Android 2.1 Eclair, which is the latest release of Android currently available. HTC Sense gives a us these little handy shortcuts here, straight to the phone dialer. This is your application drawer. And the now famous HTC clock and weather. And a whole bunch of widgets. There's their email widget, for example. That's the standard Google search widget with voice search built in. This is the calendar widget from HTC, and they've got little shortcuts to controlling your wireless radios. This is bookmarks. You can do this either as a list or as visual bookmarks, which is pretty cool. And shortcuts to your speed dials, that's also from HTC, SMS, widget, and Friendstream, which is a combination of Flickr, Facebook, and Twitter. You also have just Peep on here, HTC's Twitter application alone. But obviously a lot of us use multiple services, so that's handy. Now if you're getting tired of doing that, you can tap on the home and you can either get the Android launcher or tap again and you get all of your home screens like that so you can pick which one you want to go to quickly. Like so. It's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the hardware. These are touch sensitive controls here. They work very well. They have haptic feedback. Quite strong. So does the display. We really like that for typing. And this does have HTC's custom Android keyboard, by the way, which is one of the best software keyboards available. Phone is thin. It's about the same size as the Motorola Droid on Verizon, but obviously it's going to be thinner because there's no sliding keyboard. It's your micro USB port for charging and for data transfer. Volume controls. Your power button. 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Stereo. Nothing on that side. And nothing down here but the mic holes. The back has an interesting sculpted multi-layer design and that helps accommodate the battery underneath. If you want to see what's underneath, you peel off the back like so. And there it is, in glorious red. You can see there's quite a large speaker under here and the phone does have a great speakerphone. It's also good for navigation. And this is the micro SD card slot. There is no micro SD card included because the phone does have 8 gigs of internal storage which functions like a storage card in terms of the way the software sees it, since Android only lets you install applications on internal memory, it doesn't treat the flash drive that's in here as internal memory for installing programs, but you can put all of your music, your videos, and all your other data on there. I'll do a comparison next, first with something much bigger, HTC's largest phone, which is the HD2. This has a 4.3 inch capacitive multi-touch display and it runs Windows Mobile with HTC Sense. The Sprint Evo that's coming soon running Android is pretty much the same size but thicker than this guy so you get an idea of the comparison. And of course versus the, the Nexus One about the same size display and pretty much about the same size unit. Depends whether you like the angular or rectilinear design here or the curves of the Nexus. This fellow is pretty much all plastic. The Droid Incredible. Whereas Google has some metal involved. Obviously the, the Incredible has higher resolution camera and more storage and direct carrier support since Nexus is sold by Google. You have to deal with Google support and HTC. And now we'll compare it to the iPhone 3GS. Slightly narrower. This is a pretty good phone in terms of 
fitting in your pocket and being comfortable in the hand, and those of you with reasonable size hands can probably one hand it. So let's take a look at some of the software. Since this has a 1 gigahertz CPU and uh, 512 megs of RAM, it's pretty fast, obviously. This just opens right up quickly. We've got the built in YouTube application. We'll take a look at that real quick. This is over Verizon's EVDO network, and we will just try to pick something that doesn't look too abominable. Like uh, you just conquered the world. Definitely, you know, I, I love CBS and Triforce. They definitely uh, want to give me a different switch to high quality mode, which should be no problem over 3G. But uh, Henderson's a true legend, man. I'm glad you beat him. Uh, he beat the crap out of the worst ever beat that first round. Here we have the Android Market, which is the, the latest version since this runs in 2.1 software. And you've got your apps, your games, and you can see Verizon applications here, like the new NFL Mobile, which seems to be quite popular with you sports fans. You can download visual voicemail, VZ Tones. VCast Manager is just for transferring stuff you have on your computer onto this phone. There is no VCast video or music. And a couple of other apps that they recommend here. Since there's no VZ Navigator, Google Maps becomes quite important here. This is the version of Google Maps that has spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions, and it does a pretty good job. Sometimes it gets a little bit baffled around big box stores and complicated parking lots and things like that. Works with the accelerometer, and yes, pinch zoom. You can do things like what's nearby if you tap on a an item. As you can see, it supports latitude, layers. You can star your favorite items. And you can do directions for walking, for driving, and so on. Now we'll check out the usual Android WebKit based web browser. And there's the visual bookmark. Here we are on the web browser now, and we're at the New York Times website. You get served the mobile version, which is interesting with this. Uh, on my Nexus One, I actually get the, the full version by default. Same thing goes with CNN. And let's see how it looks with something like our website. And here you can see this is the keyboard. Really great haptic feedback. Somehow this keyboard works even better than the one on my Nexus One, even though the screen size is the same. Don't know what they did, but they just keep getting better there at HTC. Now it's loaded our website over EVDO. And you can pinch and zoom to your heart's content. Portrait and landscape support. And as with most Android phones, you don't get full flash support, but you do get mobile flash support, so it'll often hunt out the mobile version for you if you're looking at a video that's embedded in a website. This has HTC footprints, which is basically geotagging for photos that you take, creating a nice little travel log, and we'll take another look again at friend stream well, this is pretty good and you can see you can actually type type on links that people have put in Twitter and Facebook which is a little bit better than the Windows mobile clients that we've seen that do the same thing other cool things include the desk clock you wake it up you see the weather at the time, and you can set it to do just a nighttime view, very dim, so it doesn't keep you up at night, the bright view. And there are features including a wall, world clock, and an alarm clock in there. And we have the car panel, which is the easy big button approach to things. It's got a navigation, voice search, footprints, maps, search, and making a call. So hopefully you don't kill yourself when you're trying to play with your phone and you're driving. So that's the HTC Incredible for Verizon. It'll be available on the 29th of April for $1.99 with a two-year contract after rebates. Visit mobiletechreview.com to read our full review.